Number 10. William Henry Harrison was the first Whig president. In total, the party had four presidents, the least of any major party other than the Federalist. No Whig president served out even a single full term. Harrison and Taylor both died in office, and their vice presidents, John Tyler and Millard Fillmore, only served out partial terms. Number 9. Harrison was born in Virginia, and so was his vice president, John Tyler. This might seem odd, as the vice presidential pick is supposed to make the ticket appeal to a wider voting demographic. However, Harrison was only a Virginian in name. He'd moved out of the state before he was 20 and ended up pursuing politics in Ohio. Number 8. Harrison was born in 1773, three years before the nation's founding. He was the last president born as a British subject, and was the last with a strong connection to many of the nation's founders. His father had signed the Declaration of Independence. He received his first military commission from George Washington. Later, he served as governor of the Indiana Territory under John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, had numerous correspondences with both, and met both in person. Number 7. Despite having the shortest presidency, Harrison's inaugural address is the longest of any United States president by far. It was 8,460 words. The average length for an address is 2,340 words and the second longest, given by William Howard Taft, was around 5,400, 3,000 words fewer than Harrison's. In the nearly two-hour speech, he promised to serve only one term, supported states' rights on slavery, and said he wanted financial matters left to Congress's hands. Number 6. Despite his stern appearance, Harrison was described as friendly, good-humored, and completely unpretentious, much more blunt than he was graceful. Though he had a prestigious background, he never bragged about the fact that his father was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Even as a young man in the army, he wasn't interested in drinking or dueling, but rather in reading. An early army friend said he had an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. Later, as a general in the War of 1812, he was popular among his soldiers, as he shared in their hardships, was approachable, and never used his position to bully. Number 5. While Harrison held public offices at various points in his life, his popularity came from his military service. Victories in the War of 1812 and Tecumseh's War made him one of the nation's greatest heroes in his time, second only to Andrew Jackson. Number 4. With only 31 days to go off of, it's hard to analyze what a full Harrison presidency would have been like, but one thing seems clear. He would have made his own decisions. Whig Party leader Henry Clay believed he would be the real power in the White House. When Clay insisted on choosing Harrison's cabinet members, Harrison simply dismissed him, saying, Mr. Clay, you forget that I am the president. In the face of furious Whigs, Harrison repeatedly refused to fire competent Democrats from government jobs, insisting that appointments should be merit-based rather than politically based. Number 3. Harrison's campaign was one of the most revolutionary in the nation's history. It was filled with drinking, a carnival-like atmosphere, and public speeches by Harrison. This was generally considered beneath a presidential candidate. Yet, between June and October, Harrison gave 24 speeches. Number 2. Beneath all of the excitement, there was something deceptive about Harrison's campaign. He portrayed himself as a champion of the common man, and the frequent use of log cabins in campaign papers suggested he had humble beginnings. Meanwhile, the Democrat rival Martin Van Buren was portrayed as a detestable, out-of-touch elitist. In reality, it was Harrison who was born to a prominent political family. Van Buren was born into poverty. His father was a struggling tavern owner. Number 1. Unlike other Virginia-born presidents, Harrison's descendants fought for the Union. Two of Thomas Jefferson's grandsons were Confederates, and so was the only son of Zachary Taylor. Harrison's grandson, Benjamin, 
was a Union Army colonel. Despite the family's history in Virginia, Benjamin and his father, John Scott, were both born in northern states. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and donating on Patreon. Donations from 2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.